And the next question comes from Sesame Meow. Sesame Meow asks, Lightning on Bitcoin on Liquid. And it has a quote from Adam Back. Lightning on Bitcoin on Liquid, Liquid being a sidechain connected to Bitcoin, which trades in Liquid Bitcoin, or LBTC. Bitcoin layers connecting and converging. People may not know that Lightning can bridge multiple networks. How does this work? Are there multiple Lightning networks, and how do they interact with each other? This is a really interesting early proof of concept. Now, not many people realize that Lightning is not just a Bitcoin project. Uh, Lightning is an interledger project. It's basically a project that, or a protocol that can connect different blockchains to each other. Any blockchain that can support a few basic primitives, specifically the ability to have a time-locked contract that can be unlocked using a hash pre-image, also known as a hash time locked contract or HTLC, and you can build these with very simple primitives. Um, you know, and it, basically, if, if Bitcoin can support it, a lot of other blockchains can support it. Bitcoin scripting language is quite simple, uh, so any blockchain that can support these fundamental primitives can then implement the Bolt protocols. Bolt is basics of Lightning technology, and it's the interoperability specification or standard. Um, for Lightning. And if a project implements the Bolt protocols, then they can participate in the Lightning network. The question from Sesame, are there multiple Lightning networks, and how do they interact with each other? No, it's, it's one network. And the interesting thing is that you can have channels that connect um, peers that are trading, uh, essentially, or making payments with Bitcoin, and those channels are anchored and enforced by the Bitcoin blockchain. But you can also have peers today that are um, that have payment channels between them using Litecoin. So when the Lightning Network launched, it was Bitcoin and Litecoin, and so those peers are exchanging payments through payment channels that are anchored and secured by the Litecoin. Network, and recently with the introduction of Liquid BTC clients that can implement the Bolt protocols, you can have uh, nodes that have payment channels with each other that are uh, on the Liquid sidechain, which is a blockstream project for uh, connecting exchanges together, uh, primarily or large liquidity providers. Now, um, if you have a node that operates on the Bitcoin blockchain, the Litecoin blockchain, and the Liquid blockchain, or any pair of those, then that node can have payment channels on Bitcoin and payment channels on Litecoin or Liquid, and can then route payments between them. Which means that you can send a payment, and by sending it via this node, you can originate a payment in Bitcoin that then gets transmitted in liquid Bitcoin or Litecoin at the other end. Theoretically, at least, um, you could write smart contracts that implement this in Ethereum. So then you could route uh, payment channels that make payments from Bitcoin that get paid in Ether. Um, you could do this across any number of blockchains, an unlimited number of blockchains. And as long as there are some nodes that enable you to make that conversion with a, a specified exchange rate, then you can route your payments and effectively use the Lightning Network also as a decentralized exchange. This is one of the really fascinating features of Lightning, which is that in fact it is a protocol that is an interledger protocol between multiple uh, different blockchains, and as a result, can help bridge these blockchains and allow payments to flow in multiple currencies uh, and be exchanged by this decentralized exchange capability, um, with all of the advantages of privacy and all of the advantages of very, very fast payments with very, very low to zero fees. Now, um, imagine, for example, where you have a payment that originates in Bitcoin, gets routed through 
a liquid node. Now, liquid also has confidential transactions, so you could use that capability uh, potentially in the future to increase the privacy and then route it back out into a Bitcoin payment. So now, effectively, you've introduced a privacy hop in the middle of a Bitcoin transaction. You can also use it to do the equivalent of atomic swaps, because every payment channel that converts prices is effectively an atomic swap. So you can use it to exchange one currency to another. You could have a, a, a Litecoin, Liquid, and Bitcoin uh, node simultaneously connected to the network, and then you can very quickly and, and very cheaply exchange Bitcoin for Litecoin for Liquid. This is kind of one of those hidden features of Lightning Network that most people don't know about. Uh, but which could become a very powerful um, feature in the future. And this is not limited to Lightning. Any Layer 2 technology that uses these kinds of uh, fundamental cryptographic primitives, like time locks and hashes and um, uh, signature, uh, threshold signatures and things like that, could support some form of payment channels, as long as they are based on an interoperable standard. And in the case of Lightning, that is called Bolt. Uh, then these nodes can talk to each other, and they can effectively exchange currencies. Um, Russ asks a follow-up question on the Lightning-based exchanges. How does one control the pricing? So, as a follow-up to the previous question, how do you control the pricing or exchange rate between two currencies when you are swapping them on the Lightning Network? That is one of the things you simply do with the routing protocol, which means that when you pick a path, the node that you pick to do the exchange advertises its exchange rate, just like it advertises its fees. And therefore, um, you can select a path that gives you the optimal exchange rate.